everybody, this is Sarah Skopik and you're watching Traffic Musings. Just a disclaimer before I begin this episode. This episode is a personal rant. Please understand that I do understand that there are certain situations in which the words I am saying may not apply to everyone and may be even deemed offensive for people, uh, just for other people. And I understand this. Please understand, this is a rant. And if you would like to make comments about it, that's fine. But overall, this I'm not saying that I'm not welcome to criticism. I am welcome to criticism. Just please understand that. All right, let's begin. So today, I'm going to give you guys a rant. And what is this rant you're probably wondering about? Well, this rant is about people's obsession of the difference between introvert and extrovert. Yep. We're going there today, folks. As some of you probably know, or if you don't know, you're gonna know real quick right now. Uh, I am into psychology, so therefore personality types do interest me. I am a pretty big fan of the Meyer Briggs typology just because it is one of the more researched uh, free personality tests. Obviously, all personality tests have their own issues. It is very, very difficult to quantify anyone's personality to anything. That one just happens to be the best free one but there are obviously other ones out there. I am getting uh, away from myself because that's not at all where I'm getting much myself into. If you also don't know, and I'm gonna tell you right now, I am a raging extrovert in almost all of the sense that you can think of. I love people. I wouldn't be trying to be a social worker if I didn't love people. I also love talking to people. I also love entertaining people. I just, I just really like people, but that also isn't really what makes me an extrovert, to be honest, because that's not really the difference, guys. Introversion and extroversion is mostly a matter of social energy. So it is how you take in your energy, usually in relation to social cues and social situations. But in all honesty, biologically, it's just kind of how you take in information. For some people, they they like lots of stimulation and overload. They are the kind of people that need music to listen to when they work on stuff. These are the people that constantly need to tell need to talk to somebody whenever they have a problem and these are people that basically do a lot of talk a lot of interacting with the external world and stuff like that these we like to call extroverts introverts are people who typically need more alone time to recharge for example uh, and are people that think more think more in not necessarily introspectively but kind of think in a more insular environment and also do not do well with tons of stimulation and can get stimulation overload very easily. These are just very basic definitions. The problem that I have is when people basically try to be special snowflakes. I'm I'm all for people being special. Everyone should be special. Everybody's unique. Yay, yay, yay. And I'm also not against labels. I understand the power of labels. Labels can be very, very important and labels can be very, very empowering. The problem is that, a little ironically, labels can also be very separating and prevent us from kind of understanding how we relate to each other. And that is my problem with how introvert and extrovert is being used nowadays. Raise your hand if you have seen any of these kinds of articles. Ahem. Five signs that you're a blank kind of introvert. Have you seen those? Have you seen those around? You probably have seen at least 10 of them. I can probably list at least 10 of them in the description below, usually from Elite Daily or Thought Catalog. <laughs> Sorry. My problem with those articles isn't so much that, oh, hey, here's just a listicle thing that signs that you're a blah, blah, blah. The problem is that people ha- hold on to this issue of, I don't, this must, I, I don't feel I belong to this very overblown, overgeneralized label, so I must be something very unique when they're really missing the point that introversion and extroversion is a gradient, is just a gradient of understanding. And also, for the record, has nothing to do with any of the following. A, how comfortable you are around people. I'm talking about like anxiety comfortable around people. I am socially anxious and extremely extroverted. It happens. B, how much you like people. Here's a secret, guys. Some people who say they hate people are actually the most extroverted people you'd ever meet. The reason they say they hate people is because they secretly are mad that they can't seem to talk to other people. Trust me. Continue on the Thank you. Gabby here is also a raging extrovert, as you can tell by the way that she constantly needs to speak her mind. I'm just kidding. That also doesn't mean anything. It's also not a measure of how introspective you are. I know I kind 
kind of said that extroverts engage with their world externally while introverts engage with the world internally. But I mostly mean that as far as how they regain energy and how they like to choose to spend energy. I am also very introspective. I do think on my own a lot. Introspection is just kind of part of human consciousness. It's how we live. So that's not also really a difference between introversion and extroversion. I remember the other day I saw something that said, Sansa, you're an introspective extrovert. And I kind of had to laugh because I did fit in those categories. The problem is that so do a lot of people. It's just kind of how it is. In fact, have you ever met that person who says they're an introvert and someone else goes, no, you're not because you like to talk to people all the time. Guess what? They're right. The others are wrong. They're introverted because they know themselves. It, it doesn't mean how well you like to talk to people. Guess what, guys? Most comedians are introverts. Newsflash! And it also doesn't mean like how much you are a chatterbox. I can be very much a huge chatterbox, but if you put Robbie, my brother, and I in the same room, you would think he was the extrovert and I was the introvert. But he is a huge introvert, and I am the one that constantly needs to like be out in the world and either talking to people or just engaging. I'm the one that I'm the one that cannot sit downstairs by myself in silence because I actually get uneasy because the lack of stimulation, as I mentioned before, is what makes me hurt inside. The reason I bring this up is because it is true that our world favors extroverts. This is absolutely true. The way that our world is built and spun around, especially in America, favors extroverts. And sometimes does not favor the interesting insights and skills that introverts will have. This is completely and utterly true. This is not, this is a very huge generalization, but extroverts tend to think more on their feet more quickly than introverts. Not all the time, but they can be. I mean, look at comedians, but you know, at the same time. So yes, it is true that our world seems to favor people who are more extroverted, people who are out and in public more, people who engage with people more, etc., etc. And I totally get that. And then it is true that there needs to be a rise in understanding of how introverts engage with the world and the what they can bring to the world. The problem that I'm seeing and what super, super bugs me is all the stuff that says like, I'm an introvert and these are my needs are not introverted needs, they're people needs. And that's what kind of alarms me a bit because like, let me just give you some example. There's this page that if you are a friend of mine, you have heard me rant. There's this little infographic that says 10 things that you need to remember about introverts or something like that, or 10 needs of an introvert. And eight out of 10 of those things are not introverted needs, they're just human needs. For example, do not humiliate me in public was one of those things on there. What? No one likes to be humiliated in public. Why is that an introverted thing? That's just a human thing. Is it sure that maybe extroverts do that more? Maybe. Doesn't mean we like it. Just means that we're probably not thinking, or at least those particular people were not thinking because not all extroverts also commit those kinds of things without thinking. Also not important to keep in mind. Another thing that was on there was something like, give me a five minute warning before I need to finish something. Once again, that's just human courtesy. You should be doing that. I don't like to be suddenly alarmed and told that, oh gosh, I can't, I need to, oh gosh, I need to finish this now. Why didn't you tell me earlier? I can deal with it, but I think that is less to do that I'm extroverted more to do the fact that I deal with it. So, uh, and it's just stuff like that. And that's what bugs me. That's, that stuff is what bugs me. It's when you're confusing the fact that you discover, oh, hey, I'm different from other, I'm diff, myself is different from what I perceive other people like. This must mean that I prefer this, and that because I adapt to this label, it must be that everyone needs this. There are a lot of fallacies with that statement. A, not everybody needs what you think you need just because you've prescribed to a certain label. B, just because other people seem to be a certain way and you know you set yourself you are means absolutely nothing because you don't know what their experience is. I may look like I am totally fine going up and meeting new people because that is generally what I seem to put out for in front of most people. I will go up to new people I've never met and introduce myself and have a conversation. That does not mean that I, I don't know, that I don't find it semi self-conscious, that I don't find myself self-conscious. That doesn't mean that I am any less self-conscious than anybody else at all. 
So, no, that doesn't, so, it, you're, you're not, ironically, these supposed introverts that are so much more introspective, which is, again, an overgeneralization, because I know plenty of introverts that are not prescribed this kind of stuff. <laughs> again, these are not generalizations. The point is that the kind of people that I hear who say stuff like that, ironically say they're so introspective, but are not, in, but are not understanding other people's point of view. And so, and that's kind of sad to me, because the more introspective you are, ironically, the more you are usually able to relate to people. It's kind of that whole thing of the more you understand how you yourself are, the more that you can relate to other people, the more you can empathize. I should also mention another pet peeve of mine are the people that go, well, sometimes I like being around people, but sometimes I don't. Newsflash, that's called being human. Like, seriously, guys, there are days I don't like to be around people. That's, that's just how I am. There are days I, I would rather be shut up. Does that mean I'm any, that does that mean I'm introverted? No, it just means that that day I need to stay inside. I still engage my external world. I still, I still get energy from being around people, all that kind of stuff. It's just that sometimes I need some alone time. Although that's also a case of me, I'm also, not only am I extroverted, but I'm also um, emotionally sensitive, kind of. Basically, all that really means is that I am a little bit more uh, sensitive to strong emotions of other people. It has to do a bit with my social anxiety. That's all it is. It's just a small sensitivity. Almost kind of, hilariously enough, because I like to engage with people externally, but also am a bit emotionally sensitive to other people's strong emotions. <laughs> I, I like to relate to say that I'm a vegetarian who's lactose intolerant. <laughs> That's how I kind of describe that dynamic of how that can be. It can work out really well, and other times it just makes these things a little bit more difficult for me. But anyway, the, the labels are overblown, guys. So it's almost better just to say I'm more introverted or I'm less an introvert or more extroverted. And honestly, who cares? Like, just stop seeing us as some like way that we needed to divide to divide ourselves even further like special snowflake style and just see it as that you know there's some similarities that we share and there are some differences like for example if I'm working with a person who is more introverted like we're studying I should keep in mind that they probably don't want the music on maybe that helps me but maybe I should wear earbuds instead because maybe I need that to help me, but that's not what's helping them. It's also important in classroom settings. Some kids really need a classroom where the teachers are sitting with are sitting with the whole classroom in a calm manner and going through things piece by piece. Other kids need that time to be able to stand up and engage with their environment and talk and discuss. These things are all very valid. It's just some kids are some kids learn better when they're not called upon to answer questions in class, and others need that discussion with other people. That's just, those are just people. That's just how we work. So instead of, I don't know, guys, everyone should know about, should be introspective about themselves. Sometimes we like people, sometimes we don't. Don't deny a person's identity. If they say they're extrovert, believe them. If they say they're introvert, believe them. And ask them what that means to them too. Don't just assume things. <sighs> That was a long rant and I apologize for that, but I hope that was good. Anyway, I gotta get going because I'm a little close to home actually. Yay! I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I hope something amazing happens to you. And without further ado, I hope to see you all in the